Hey guys, I'm Jake Boomer with Alpha Angler. Um, today we're going to do the video uh, putting this 2016 Phoenix 921 up for sale. And I get a lot of questions about this boat and you know how we set them up. And I'm really big into efficient boats. And so I kind of want to show you uh, the condition of this boat, which is in immaculate shape. It was wrapped for the first two years of its life or whatever. So it's in really good shape. We just got the wrap off. You can see that there's no decal on the side here. That's because they took it off when they did the wrap. I've ordered new decals. Some guys don't want decals. So I didn't put them on yet. It's up to you guys if you're gonna want them. But um, it just got unwrapped. It just got back from being detailed, professionally detailed, because I can't stand dirty carpets. So I had somebody just really clean this carpet out good, but also go through it and find out if there's anything that need to be fixed. All right, so I'm gonna show you this 2016, show you all the details front to back. So check it out. It's got power poles, it's got an HDS-12 at the bow. It's got an HDS-12, I'm sorry, has an HDS-12 at the console, has an HDS-12 at the bow, and a Helix-12 up here to run the 360. So I got a 112 Ultrex. If you'll notice, I've got two transducers here. I've got the external one for the Lowrance, and then I've got the US-2-1 one, or the US one built in that is plugged into the Humminbird. And the idea behind that is if one of these two graphs go down, I have a map, and I have 2D sonar in both of them. If they're both up and running, then what we use them for is one does, this does 360, and this is my mapping and my 2D sonar. That's how I like to set this up. If you can see, the pedals are up high for the power poles. You're not gonna accidentally run into them when you're setting the hook. And lots of space, like once again, you can stand on both sides of this trolling motor without standing on your rods. The other thing I really like about this is you can see I've got the battery gauge down there. That's for my lithium batteries. That tells me how much charge I've got left. With those lithium batteries, I've never got them under 50% on a tournament day. So it's pretty nice to know, especially if you're fighting current, how much you got left. <clears throat> so I like to set these graphs up like this. I've got 360 on this side, and then I've got uh, you know mapping, which is tied into the, the console graph. So when you set a waypoint, it comes up over here. But this is 2D sonar, which I don't know doesn't show anything right now. But this is down scan imaging from the back of the boat. And it's kind of a trick that Brandon showed me. Using that down scan imaging, if there's a fish that comes under the boat or in the back, you can pitch behind the boat and catch some of those deeper smallmouth. So a pretty cool trick. And you get a lot of detail to down scan that you won't get out of the 2D. The one thing I did with the 360 that you might like, I set it up. You can see the two disconnects. You can disconnect this, those two power cables, cut these zip ties and unscrew the 360 unit. If you're fishing really shallow water, it takes literally three minutes, pop that 360 transducer off there and it won't get caught up in the weeds. All right, so let's move to the back. I'm a firm believer in Yamahas. Even if you're not, I just, uh, I think between me and my fishing partners, we've had about 2,200 flawless hours of Yamaha use. So this one has 300 hours on it. Um, I'll get a full write up and all the details done by a Yamaha uh, mechanic to whoever buys it to make sure that they know that it's got great compression and everything. The thing runs like a top. Incredible gas mileage. Um, it's still under warranty until middle of the year 2020. So you don't have to worry about it. Power pole blades. We've got a TNH Marine hydraulic jack plate, which is awesome with this boat. The cool thing about this boat is if you bury that jack plate and trim it to about halfway three quarter in rough water in Florida, this boat stays flat and does really, really well in rough water. I actually believe it's one of the fastest rough water boats you can buy. And I believe that is because it's a very balanced boat. The gas tank is right behind the seats and the seats are centrally located in the boat. So you got plenty of space, but it's an extremely fast, balanced platform, does really well in rough water. So I really like that you get this jack plate in, so in uh, flat water and you can push it way up and get those extra RPMs and this thing really goes. It'll go 73 or four loaded. Here's the rear compartment with the lithiums. Like I said in the ad, if you buy this boat, you don't have to have lithiums. We'll put a brand new battery charger in it and new batteries. But if you do want the lithiums, I'll sell them with the boat. The way this is set up, there is two 36 volt, 30 amp hour lithium. So if you add it and you don't put them in series, you put them in parallel, which is different than the standard 12 volt batteries. You put them in parallel because it's they're already 36 volt. They have to be charged with a special charger, which will come with the boat. It's, these batteries, when they're down to about 50%, will charge in about 
three hours. If you use it down to 60% like a standard, non-windy, non-current, pre-fish day, those batteries charge in about two hours with the external charger. So I know that there's no charger and you gotta carry a charger around, but what we found is when we put these two batteries in and pulled out that charger, we saved 220 pounds. And that's 220 pounds that's not on the bottom of this boat, that's not pushing down as you're trying to run. That's why this boat gets amazing gas mileage. And I'll show you some of the tricks we use to monitor our gas mileage, but 220 pounds like a grown man standing on the back deck. We just took him off, he's gone. Boat gets out of the hole and flies because it's super light and balanced. It has an inline charger here, so when this cranking battery is full, all excess um, amperage will go to charging those your trolling motor batteries when you're running around. Now that doesn't happen very often because a lot of the times you've got graphs running, you've got um, your your libels running in a tournament, and so I don't think there's a lot of bleed off, but I have seen it charge the batteries on like long runs. Um, this got a jumper setup. This this set of batteries has a 12 volt jumper connection. So if you kill your cranking battery, you just jump from the 12 volt off your 36. It's already wired in. Boat will fire right up. You let it sit for 30 seconds, fire the boat up. But then after that day, you need to recharge those batteries. That's really important because with the lithiums, you pulled only one cell down. And so you'd want to make sure that you charge those equally. The computer and the lithiums will take care of that. So then you got your power pole set up, spare prop, tons of extra space in this rear end. The way Phoenix designs these rear, these back compartments is amazing. There's a ton of extra space. Even if I put a third battery in there, I still have a lot of extra room. And if you look back here, you can see it's pretty easy to get in there and get your fuel filter. <clears throat> Change that out every year. All right, hopefully you guys can see this. This is a, the, one of the best features on this boat. I, when you have a big boat like this that holds 48 gallons of gas, this boat actually, for instance, right there is two bars of gas. So I hold 48 gallons of gas and I have to guess what two out of six bars means. With this boat, it has a gallons burned meter. So I can fill it up to 48 gallons, reset this, and as I burn gallons, it'll tell me how many gallons have gone through the motor. So if I burn 30 gallons, I know I've got 18 left. It's the most accurate way to know how much fuel is in your boat. It's the best feature I've seen for monitoring your fuel. It also tells you how much uh, gallons you're burning per hour. So when you're running around, you can find out what is the most efficient RPM I'm running at. For instance, in practice, you don't need to burn a bunch of gas. And then this is the hour and hour meter gauge and the trim tilt gauge and the RPM. <clears throat> power pole up and down pretty sweet tie off thing you don't have to tie off to your shifter anymore you just tie off to that it's pretty nice when you're just stopping at a dock real quick to get fuel or something like that um, it has a 0.1 Lowrance 0.1 on it so that's a magnetic compass pretty handy I love this cooler and I'll tell you why this cooler fits two gallon jugs of water with a bag of ice and your lunch on top so I can't stand that drinking 48 water bottles a day and having just empty water bottles everywhere so me and my partner usually put a gallon on each side and we just drink a gallon out of the gallon jug it makes way less mess it's easier to keep a gallon cold so this thing will hold two gallon jugs plus a bag of ice plus food that's pretty handy it's got, uh, you know, this. these are catch-alls for all your little gears and your hooks and stuff like that. All right, so let's move on to tackle. This is an Aaron Martin's idea here that's uh, genius. I love it. So what I've put on there is some foam, and I glued it to the lid and then put the straps in to put hooks on it. And it's the most handy thing I've ever done. If you... If you, for instance, if you're in a tournament with a lot of drop shots and you're breaking off all the time, you just stack a bunch of drop shot hooks somewhere and you never have to dig for stuff. And in practice, you put the, you know, the good hooks up there that you might have used and you have them handy for you the next time. So you can see I just, this is what it looks like after my last tournament, but it's awesome. Super well organized. I put the, the gasket on the sides of the bin, keeps the water out. But the most important thing and the biggest thing I've noticed with this system and adding this stuff on top of it, um, adding that foam to the lid is you're right your tackle stays cooler and I know that sounds dumb but how many times have you dug out a spinner bait and all of the skirt and the rubber is like melted together that happened a whole lot less this year so the organizer is awesome 
I love it that your tackle is down the middle and deep in the boat. That helps with balance. It helps this boat ride really well. And then on the sides, I generally stick like tubs. You can organize it however you want, but this is like the best tackle organizer I've, I've ran into. I really like the way this thing lays out. So I take the rod sleeves out of our boats. And the reason I do that is we fish a lot of team tournaments. And what I think is cool about this layout is I've got two full-size rod boxes for team tournaments. And we pulled a 34 rods out of one of these before, which was a lot of rods. And hard to, it was full, but you can hold a ton of rods. We also have three alpha angler rods in there for whoever buys the boat because, you know, got to have alpha angler rods if you're going to buy the alpha angler boat. Oh, and you get to choose what rods. I just threw them in there to remember to tell you guys about it. Passenger side doesn't have any rod socks in it either, or any rod tubes in it either, but like I said, 35 rods out of one side. Keep all of your extra clothing and stuff in here. This is a side organizer. I don't actually, my co-anglers don't put their rods in here. I actually just use this for keeping extra ropes and you know different things that need to be out of the way <clears throat> all right guys so let's talk about live wells i love the phoenix live wells i don't i can't remember how much water they actually hold it's something like 20 some gallons a side but the the nice thing about it is they're separated live wells and they have a plug in the bottom of them so there's not a valve i've had you know valves sometimes they get stuff in them they get um crawdad carcasses in them and they don't always close all the way and so your water goes out when you're running these live wells, you can control the water level, so you fill it up as full as you want, or as little water as you want. Like, for instance, if you don't have a whole lot of fish, or if you just got one in the morning, you don't have to fill it all the way up. And, and that's important because water is heavy. And in a hot summer day, say you have you know just one fish in there, if you don't have to carry around an extra 20 gallons of water, well, a gallon of water weighs 8.34 pounds. You do the math on how much extra weight you're trying to get on plane. The other reason I like two live wells is if you've got a fish that's bleeding, for instance, um, I can create a freshwater scenario where I put the healthy fish on one side and exchange the water on the hurting fish without without the blood staying in the whole water system. When you have blood and water, it messes with the amount of oxygen that water can hold, and it's really hard on the healthier fish. The, you know, if you've got and a great example is if you've got a co-angler that deep hooked about seven fish and he's having a hard time knowing he got bit or whatever issue. If you've got an issue with your co-angler's fish, it doesn't affect your fish and vice versa. You know, if you deep hook two or three of them and you got to decide if you're going to keep it and it's, it doesn't have to harm all the fish in, the, in, your, in your boat. And I like that. I think one of the best features of this boat is this net holder. So it's an in-floor net holder. You're never without a net. You'll never go to the lake with the kids and take your net out and forget to put it back in in a tournament and be without the net. You always have the net, which is awesome. The other thing is, is that makes a huge drain access for water that comes in the boat. And we fish some pretty nasty water up here in the northwest in the Columbia River. And if you take one over the bow, you want the water back to where the bilge can pump it out. This thing drains this floor out immediately, which is pretty awesome. Genius design, it's like a two-in-one bonus. This boat will come with two consoles. I only have one in right now, but it has another matching console. Um, I will uh, work with anybody that may not want the lithiums in there. And I'll put a brand new charger in there and brand new batteries. Um, it's got new tires. It's been immaculately maintained. The Yamaha itself, which is probably the biggest concern for a lot of people buying a used boat, has been taken care of by Yamaha. The Yamaha service rep in the Northwest helps me take care of this thing. It's had a new impeller in it. The oil has changed every 50 hours. Um, we've done all the filters every year. It's just had new spark plugs. Runs like an absolute rocket ship. I've never had any issue with any of my Yamahas after the show came out. It's a great motor. It also gets really good gas mileage, especially on this platform. I believe there might be one scratch in this whole boat, one or two, that I really know about. Let me show you guys. Because this boat was wrapped, a lot of the dock scratches and beatings that boats just get when they're used all the time, the, the wrap kind of protected it. The downside to the wrap was it took me, you know, six hours to get it off there. But it... So anyways, this is my 921, you guys. If you've got any emails or if you want any detailed pictures of any area of the boat, just send me an email alphaanglercustoms at gmail.com. My number is also at the bottom of this listing, so you can give me a call.